Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bring them on to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some interesting stuff about mass adoption. First up, IBM is turning patents into NFTs, says it's a future trillion-plus dollar market. And at first glance, this looks like a pretty great article, but when we really dig into it, it's not that big of a deal, and I'm going to explain exactly why. On top of that, Facebook-backed crypto Diem updates launch plan will take a phased approach. And the real question is, do we really need something from Facebook to get into the cryptocurrency space? We'll take a quick look. I'm gonna tell you, it's absolutely not needed. And last two we'll take a look at is former comptroller of the currency, Brian Brooks, to lead Binance's US trading platform and why he was chosen. And lastly, we'll take a look at a new Bitcoin price concern from JP Morgan at odds with immense support at 52K. And we'll see exactly why JP Morgan doesn't really want Bitcoin to flourish. So we'll take a look at all those stories and we'll try to get through them as fast as possible. First, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is April 21st, 5.45 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, pretty great day so far. Looks like we haven't gotten below $2 trillion, which is amazing. Mark cap $2 trillion. And of course, we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis to see what's going on. And if you take a look at it, you've got Pirate Coin is one of the most bullish coins out there at R. I like that one. RDD, Cello, DGB, and Bow, Ample. So let's take a look at what's going on as far as the actual market and the prices. And as we can see, seven day change for Bitcoin down almost 14%. Kind of a bummer, but you know what? I'll take the 54,000 as opposed to the 52, which we dropped from a very high of 64K. And actually we had taken a look at this about what's going on and it's not a big deal. And I know we talk about this on the channel, but I really need to get this into people's heads, especially if you're new. First of all, if you're new, welcome. And uh, this isn't a big deal. Traditional market, this is awful. But uh, for a little bit of a uh, uh, depression of what we got now, it's just a uh, Wednesday, so not a big thing. Also, we gotta remember that uh, these types of dips, these types of pullbacks are completely normal. And uh, in the last bull run in 2017, we would see things that would go between 29% uh, to 40%. So a 21% uh, dip from 64 to 52, not a big deal, and we're on the way up. Ethereum, I know everybody's happy about this, 2374. Congratulations, Ethereum holders. Uh, I'm one of those. Who knows what's gonna happen, but it looks like it's doing pretty good. Binance up 2%, XRP watch out down 27%. Hey, you know what? Who knows what's gonna happen, but if this uh, lawsuit gets uh, dismissed like people are talking about, maybe it could be a good day. I have no insider information, but uh, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll be great. Tether, nobody cares. Dogecoin, no idea why this is up because I think it's, uh, it's still a project. It's still a cryptocurrency. I still think it's trash, sorry. And if you, if you comment below, it's gonna to go to a dollar, I will probably just ignore that. Cardano down, everything's pretty much down. Bitcoin Cash up 11% in the last 24 hours, pretty good. 37% for VeChain, new partnership was announced, of course, uh, they're doing great. And everything is uh, just a little bit uh, all over the place. The big thing I want you to, to take a look at is the sentiment. I know sentiment people say, well, you know, what is the big deal about that? It's just the overall feeling of where the market's gonna go. And this is all based on Trade the Chain as they pull that data in uh, from Twitter and they scour the internets and the webs and whatnot. And we're still at a pretty bullish sentiment. I still think we're gonna go up. I still think we're gonna hit uh, Bitcoin at 150K, not financial advice. And I still think that altcoin season is right around the corner. On top of that, Let's satisfy your inner trader. Let's click a look on the projected range. Nothing really too good right here. But if you are a trader and uh, a gambler like some of us, uh, take a look at Sora, Golem, Ave, Unibright, Huobi Token, and Aragon. Uh, beyond that, really can't tell you too much. Also, take a look at Trade the Chain. There's a link for that 14-day uh, free trial. Let's take a look what's going on into the market today. So, not the market, the stories. The big thing is, and this caught my attention, especially when IBM is involved in pretty much anything, uh, because it's a big name. And when I saw this article, I was pretty impressed. I'm like, hey, look at that. IBM is turning patents into NFTs, non-fungible token, since so it's a future trillion plus dollar market. And it's a pretty good article written by Crypto Slates, uh, just some basic fluff in here and there, but I really don't care. What I really care about is where the article actually came from. And for that, we take a look at the IBM website. And what I want you to notice here is that IBM has its own blockchain. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is great for to get into public consciousness about what's going on. But in the overall grand scheme of things, this is a big nothing burger 
if you're going to talk about what it can do for you and what's going on. I'm going to explain in a second. So first up, this was on today, uh, April, sorry, yesterday, April 21st. They announced plans that began representing patents as non-fungible tokens or digital assets by working with IBM. And they're going to do this to create the infrastructure for representing patents as NFTs and storing the records on a blockchain network. The tokenization of intellectual property or IP will help position position patents to be more easily sold, traded, commercialized, or otherwise monetized, and bring new liquidity to this asset class for investors and innovators. So first of all, there's this thing called in, intangible assets. And uh, if you don't know what that is, it's not a big deal. Really, what it all comes down to is that things that you really can't see, touch, hear, smell, taste, <laughs> like a patent, uh, those are intangible assets. And these types of things must be held on a corporation's uh, balance sheet. Now, the problem is, is that it's held there, but how do you give that value? How do you kind of make these things uh, be able to come alive as far as like uh, for, your, for your accountants, for your division, and then how you would actually say this has value? Well, uh, this is how they're going to do something like that. By they're going to uh, create these patents and put them into an NFT and put them on... Um, their treasury or their spreadsheet. So I think it's uh, an interesting point of what they're doing, but here's the big thing. By representing um, intellectual property in this way, it can be licensed, sold, and commercialized. That's the big thing. Corporations want to know what's the bottom line, how much can I get for this, how much can I make? Organizations can also more easily view the intellectual property of an asset on their balance sheet. So that's great, good for them. These NFTs will be stored, and this is the big thing, and shared on the IPW platform, hosted on IBM Cloud, and powered by the IBM blockchain. And then it goes into talks about how this could be great for these corporations and entities and whatnot. But this is the big thing, the IBM blockchain. So what does that mean? I mean, we think about the IBM blockchain, Hyperledger Fabric. What does that mean for me and you who are just a retail investor? Well, not a darn thing. And we take a look at, there was an article written, this was on July 2nd, 2019, but they all took a look back and said, what is this new IBM blockchain? Well, the problem with the IBM blockchain is that it is centralized. It is private and is pretty much run in the IBM ecosphere, which if you want to talk about blockchain, it is what that is, but it is not the fundamental analysis of what it actually can become, which is decentralized and will never be that. So when we take a look at, well, where's the token? How do I invest in this? How do I get into this? You can't because it's, it's just saved there. Uh, on the IBM platform. And that is why even though they have, they launched blockchain pilots with uh, Walmart and Aetna and all these different places, I think VeChain did too. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, for the retail investor. Now this is great for corporations who really are like, you know what, we want something private. We want something in here. We want something that we can really control and not have anybody access to. But that's not the whole point of cryptocurrency and blockchain. So again, this is a great idea and it'll probably be like they call a trillion dollar uh, industry. Uh, but for us, this, uh, this isn't really gonna be, we're not gonna be a part of that. So it's not like it's on ERC-20 token or Ethereum. It, it just is what it is. So again, great article. Don't really see uh, anything for us per se. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on uh, to our next piece, which speaking of, uh, Huge corporations who don't need more money. <laughs> Facebook back crypto DM updates launch plan will take a phased approach. And um, I know as we go through this, you probably think to yourself, who cares about Facebook and their crypto project? Because really, if you're going to talk about uh, the most centralized one, I mean, we'll take a look. IBM is probably number one. And maybe this could probably be number two. So the Facebook-backed crypto DM, firmly called Libra, is taking a phased approach to launch co-creator and chief economist of DM, uh, Christian Catalini. The aim is to launch a pilot with a single stable coin pegged to the US dollar this year. This pilot will be small in scale and will largely focus on transactions between individual consumers. Well, how convenient. DM is now in talks with Swiss financial regulators to obtain a payment license. A big step of our dialogue with regulators has been a phased approach to launch. We're going to be phasing in different functionalities and use cases and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here's the big thing. Listen to this. All members will have to undergo extensive KYC. Know your customer. Probably AML too. Once we get the green light from the regulators, we will start experimenting with a small number of users with a small number of players. And here's the thing. 
If you were around back in the day, 2018, 2019, um, Facebook came out and they said, we're going to do our own blockchain, our own cryptocurrency digital asset. It's going to be called Libra and it's going to be awesome. And all these different corporations were lined up to get in line and go, you know what, Facebook, we are right behind you. We would love to be a part of this as you usher in this new world order uh, to make payments available to the global community. And the U.S. government said, take a seat, grab some bench, because you're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to allow you to do this global infrastructure for payment system. That's our job. And that's pretty much what happened. They pretty much slapped them down and said, you're not going to do it. And before you know it, all these entities, all these corporations said, you know what? We're going to just sidestep and uh, you know exit stage left. And that's exactly what happened. So they're rebranding it. They're going to do this whole thing with Facebook and go, you know what? We want to do payments uh, between all of our users. And we take a look at, let me show you something. Let me show you something. If you take a look at where Facebook is located and the kind of uh, penetration it has globally, well, first of all, uh, this, I couldn't really find it for Facebook itself, but it's pretty global, except for China and some other places that are not gonna allow that thing, right? But remember, Facebook just isn't Facebook. It is Facebook, it is Instagram, it is WhatsApp and whatever else they bought and I can't keep track of. So they're pretty darn huge. So if they're gonna do this DM project, this could be on all the different platforms. But here's the question. And the question is this, do we really need a global payment system in a centralized manner by an entity that we can't even trust with our private information because they have no idea how to keep things safe. So you're telling me the same people that leaked all my information online uh, for all the Facebook things and all the different things that they've done, I'm gonna trust them with my financial, uh, my financial information? Are you out of your mind? So again, I don't see a point for this. I don't see why I would trust them to do anything with anything with uh, my information. And the big question is, even if I wanted, if, if I'm in America and I wanted to pay somebody in, Nigeria or something like that, and I want to do a, a, a quick transaction. Could they do that? Could they make it from the U.S. dollar to whatever the fiat is over there in Nigeria? And could they make this actually happen on a low-cost basis and actually do it? Well, maybe, but there's going to be limitations. I can tell you, like what, just like that, with like a Venmo, with with a Zelle, other different types of payment plans or payments uh, applications. There's only so much that you actually send and actually do. And here's another thing. If they're going to have KYC for everybody, well, guess what? In a lot of places in Sub-Saharan Africa, you can't be identified because there is no way to do that. And that's why there's a huge amount of people who are unserved and unbanked. So again, I do not see the whole point of this. Let me know in the comments section what you think potentially be a, I don't know, global payment system. We'll see. We'll see what you have with that. And that's all I have to say on this, this one. Let's move on to a couple of our last pieces. Uh, second to last, former comptroller Brian Brooks to lead Binance's US trading platform. So this is not, CZ Binance is not stepping down, but Brian Brooks, uh, the former comptroller, is stepping in for Binance US. And there's nothing really great about this article. It just you know says this is what it is. And the only thing I will say is this. With this actually happening and them bringing Brian Brooks in, I've said this before and you probably heard this yourself, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And if Brian Brooks can come in there and all the different people that he actually has contacts with, how far behind do you think it is for Binance.us to actually be able to bring Binance Global into the United States and actually just become that huge exchange? Well, maybe, because I'll also tell you this, uh, Binance just hired uh, former U.S. Senator Max Baucus, who served Montana from 78 to 2014. So again, if you're looking for regulation and to be able to get and to move into different parts of America, why wouldn't you just hire somebody like this to bring things into the forefront? So uh, I got to tell you, if I was Coinbase, I mean, as good as they're doing, um, you got Binance right on your heels and they got a lot of people behind them. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I think this is a beautiful move by Binance, especially to really capture a ton of market share, but uh, only time will tell. And then uh, let's finish up, shall we? So talking about articles, 
Bitcoin price and everything else, we've seen a quite a slump lately, right? Uh, 64,000 just a couple of weeks ago, and now we're at uh, sitting around $54,000. So there's always going to be somebody who says that uh, the Bitcoin price is going to be just fine. This is Willie Wu. He talks about that uh, there's a uh, line of support, which is the $1 trillion market cap, which is like the line in the sand. And of course, he goes through technical analysis and talks about how great it is. And there's this line of support here around 52,000, which is the same thing I've heard a lot of TA people talk about. Who knows? Then we move forward. JP Morgan is talking about how bearish they are in Bitcoin. This is uh, Nicholas Panna Gertze Glue. Pretty sure I nailed that name. In his latest note, argued that uh, his price drip would not see buyers step in like before. Futures positions unwinding, they would not reverse, and thus overall interest in institution Bitcoin bets would now fade. And he states, momentum signals will naturally decay from here for several months, months, given their still elevated levels. And here's the thing. They could both be right. Who knows? Willy Wu, uh, T.A., is just an indicator and it could actually be then you've got you know jp morgan coming out and saying you know what uh, we don't think it's gonna it's gonna make it, it's gonna go down it's amazing how jp morgan always tries to push this price down for bitcoin i don't know if you see it but it seems like every time i turn around jp morgan's like it's not gonna make it it's gonna fail it's gonna go down it's like they're trying to pull the train back to get back into cryptocurrency don't know if that's uh, the case of what it actually is but it seems like what it is but i just remind everybody again these things that we see, these corrections, these dips, uh, they're all normal. And this is not the traditional market space. Remember, just like in 2017, I mean, you've got uptrends. Look, even when we when we finished out in 2020, Bitcoin was what, around what, $30,000, Let's see. Let me do some quick math. So four months, we're doing pretty good. I think even at $52,000, and that's, uh, you know, almost double, a little bit less, 40%. Just remember, we are in a very, very early start of this bull run. We're only around mid-April, April 20th. I think we got a lot of room to grow. And on top of that, if we take a look at uh, how much as far as like the corrections, as far as time frame goes, I mean, last time we had uh, huge dips of 29%, which lasted 21 days, 33%, which lasted for 34 days, 40%, which lasted 12 days, and so on and so forth. So uh, 64,000 to 52, I'm not too sure uh, we won't correct ourselves and just keep going up. But again, anybody's guess, I'm still in the camp of Bitcoin at 150K, but uh, I still do believe that altcoins will probably crush it uh, this bull run and maybe, uh, a lot more than Bitcoin has, but time will tell. All right. So that is it for today's, uh, news and stories. First of all, if you made this far, <laughs> thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Uh, if you liked the video, found some value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing all the stories we talk about usually time sensitive, and that usually helps with the channel a tremendous amount. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.